Hello everyone, Strategy Test here, and today we are back on Europa New Stars 4. And as the video's title says, we are going to take a look at the various mistakes that Noob make. First of all, uh, I want to say that this game is huge, and getting used to it is not easy at all, and even talking about it takes a lot of time. So to avoid spending too much on it, I am splitting this video in two parts. With one in which I am going to talk about some basics and another one in which I am going to talk about some advanced ones. But now, let's get to the content itself. One of the bigger mistakes I have ever seen is the one you are looking at. Having all your regiments on various provinces. What this should do is grant you the immense power to not have rebels in your provinces. Of course this myth was born on the internet as a fake news and it's completely false. Yeah, it's false. Having your various regiments in all of your provinces won't even at maximum maintenance give a lot of unrest reduction. It is a lot better to have one standing united army to be ready and defeat your rebels and enemies in case of urgency. Since uh, basically as you can see having all of these various and different regiments will uh, will allow to for example this Novgorodian army to destroy all of your armies. But speaking of maintenance, another huge mistake I've seen being done is the clanning war with 0% army maintenance. As you can see here, maintenance in the economy screen is this uh, button. Having, I say it right here, though, that you should never do it since it's basically suicide. If you have an army near the front of the war, so basically, if you have, uh, in this case, Novgorod with 33k army, guys. For example, this 2000 army, not only the 2000 men would not resist the impact of 13,000 men, but even if you had those uh, 12,000k men there at zero maintenance, they would have all be killed. But speaking of war with Novgorod, let's go to declare, to the declare war pattern, as you can see. If I click on that button, there's uh, a menu that will pop up. But a very huge mistake is attacking choosing no Kazu Spelly on an enemy which you have a Kazu Spelly on already. So, for example, if you, uh, for example, want to attack Novgorod with the no Kazu Spelly option, why would you ever do that? You will lose minus two stability. You will have plus two war exhaustion, and you will get minus thirty-five aggressive expansion to your neighbors of the same religion for the most part. So that doesn't really make sense if you have, uh, in this case, the conquest casus belli. But luckily, the game will automatically select the best Casus Belli. But be careful to add to it every time you declare war. Yeah. So in some cases, if uh, you have uh, a rival, for example, I want to put Novgorod as a rival. I will let a month fall. As you can see, I have gained the humiliate rival Casus Belli. But if you return to declare war, Button, you could get the human rival castle spelly, but to be honest, why would you ever do that as Muscovy? I guess not correct. Better to take the reconquest castle spelly. Yes, yeah, so uh, as I already said, be careful to it. Also, if you stay here on the allies, you should always take a look at what's going to enter in the war. In the war and was not if for example you want to attack a nation but that nation is allied to a bigger country you could declare war 
on another ally of that nation you want to attack. And so let's make an example. Hypothetically, in the future, you would like to attack Crimea. But Crimea will be probably allied to the Ottomans, if not a vassal. But usually Crimea will be allied to one of the Ords. So, uh, maybe even the Great Ord. So, instead of uh, declaring war on Crimea and having the Ottomans against you, you could declare war on the Great Ord that hypothetically, always hypothetically, will be allied to Crimea and you could get in a war Crimean regions. So that's something you should also consider, and that is something I will give as a tip. And uh, yeah, so returning on on the uh, the club war menu, we are talking about uh, allies. Yeah, so uh, there's allies screen. This is the enemy allies and your allies. So. In most cases, and especially with the DLC Cossacks, which I personally don't like, allies won't enter in an offensive war, if you don't have favors or a reason for them to enter. And also, if you are attacking one of their own allies, they will enter almost always on the side of the defender. So, if for example, you are allied to, uh, well, maybe Sweden, but Sweden is allied to Poland for some reason. Sweden will always enter on Poland's side instead of your. So, but talking about warfare in general, some things I can give you are activating your force before the war, but also looking at the actual garrison. So, as you can see here at Mosaic. I could remove uh, uh, the garrisons that the fort has, but as you can see, the garrison is nothing, it's zero. You could also reactivate it, but even in a month, it will take uh, severe, uh, a severe amount of time. So, uh, yeah, and also, as a very easy tip, you should never go to war with uh, a fort that isn't even uh, activated and with uh, zero uh, garrison. Also, a little uh, tip about army composition. I'm going to talk uh, pretty rapidly on it, since the next video on new mistakes will be about it. But as, as very easy on, it should never really have more than 4 or 6k carry men in your armies if, if you are not a Nord or Poland or some other very rare scenarios. This is something you should never do. And uh, also, also speaking on general, you should divide your generals into two. As you can see, I have this general. So you're basically uh, going to use one for sieges. Well, uh, you're going to use uh, these two types. One for sieges and one for battle. But as you can see here, there's four, the four Pips uh, categories: the shock, uh, the fire, the maneuver, and the siege. A good battle general should have high shock and fire pips, and well, uh, maneuver as well. If well, is, maneuver is always accepted too, while a siege general should have high siege and maneuver, since the siege helps with sitting fort and maneuver helps a lot with decreasing the attrition that you get so it's fantastic for a f uh, for a siege to have uh, a general with eye maneuver and eye siege capabilities basically shock and fire are your tactical peeps while maneuver and siege are your strategical peeps and uh, speaking of peeps you should also take a look at terrain since rivers, forests, taps, mountains, etc. are all terrains or uh, malus and debuffs which will give you also other malus in certain situations. So remember a very important thing I'm going to say. If you have a fort 
owner of provinces. It doesn't matter if you are the one who's actually attacking, the modifiers for terrain will always go to your enemy and you will be designed as the defender if you hold a fort. So, if you are attacking an enemy army who is attacking a mountainous province, so for example, we're going to attack Basquiat, uh, 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 well, actually, not with an unpronounceable name, maybe we're going to take uh, uh, another, yeah, we're going to take Vazteta uh, in this case. So, for example, Vazteta, if Vazteta uh, in the Schweiz Canton is uh, a fort, and it also has the mountain terrain and as you can see as a river if uh, the enemy is coming from Kalboden basically it will have uh, minus three dice to combat just because of terrain of course the maneuver peeps will uh, uh, maybe reduce it but uh, having my three to dice is uh, every time it's uh, very dangerous uh, and uh, honestly it's uh, a lost battle in advance for attack for the attacker if uh, on uh, same uh, amount of men though, though there are some rare occasions which uh, these uh, can go on guys uh, to defend since uh, in the steps yeah since in the steps the attacker, I believe, receives bonuses to the dice. So be always careful to your terrain. It's something they should always and always take a look at. But and those were the most important ones. But ending with uh, the last one, I'm going to talk in this video, which is a bit an an absurd one, but that also makes sense. Well. This mistakes comes from God knows where. Basically, some nibs don't marry countries with the same dynasty as theirs because they think that rulers get bad stats even yeah, even if it totally makes sense on human logic. So uh, as you can see, I have Rusto which is of my same dynasty. And I've seen uh, uh, this on uh, multiplayer, which people wouldn't accept their royal marriage from vassals because they thought of this. Uh, okay, even if that makes sense on human logic, on European Universalist 4, there really isn't any kind of logic in it. And maybe on Crusader Kings too, because there are some uh, traits that you get from uh, incest, but in European Universalist 4, there is any proof of it. So, probably accept your royal marriage from your cousins uh, uh, carefully because uh, this isn't re the real world. So, yeah, you can you can marry your brother or sisters or your cousins without any problem. So, <laughs> yeah. So, end the first uh, uh, video of the six here, so it doesn't get too long. But I uh, but I hope you enjoyed. And uh, now, hopefully, you won't die the first days in your European size 4 campaigns. Bye, everyone, for the time being on uh, European Universalis. Uh, I just want to say that I'm sorry for the people who wanted to attend to the interview with Dr. Maggot on uh, Starcraft 2, and for the people who want who waited for it, I'm really sorry. Basically, uh, Dr. Maggot fell. Uh, in an illness, uh, and uh, we weren't uh, able to uh, do the interview. But anyway, it will be done the next week, so hopefully you will see it on the channel. But for the time being, bye everyone. Uh, Strategy taste here.